Hey, soccer fans, Coach Alex here with Coach Gabe. And we are doing our very first video blog post in the post-mortem stage of the U.S. <laughs> national uh, team, the women's team with the World Cup. I know a lot of you are um, probably disappointed, and um, it's hard. It's hard to watch, and it's hard to you know experience that now two times in a row in the last month. You know, we just watched the, the, the U.S. men's team in the Gold Cup yeah. lose uh, against Mexico. But I wanted Coach Gabe to kind of share some insights about how this team – the current U.S. national women's team, compares to the 99 World Cup uh, winning women's team, all right? Those of you that maybe were too young or uh, to, to witness that game, uh, it's infamous in the sense that uh, Brandi Chastain removed her shirt and, became, and the, the sports bra yeah. basically was born during that game, if, sure. you, if you don't recall. So don't recall. What, what's the main point that you want to share with us about the differences between those teams? Well, before I start off with the differences, I want to point out, you know, we're very proud of the U.S. women's team. Absolutely. They worked hard, ran hard, played hard, and they're very humble in defeat. And so that shows a lot of character with our U.S. team. Uh, between the 99, or not, well, 99, but the yeah. 90s team to the 2000s team, uh, mostly the, both teams are probably the most fit teams in the world. Okay, We've always hung our heads on being the hardest workers, and that will never change. But the difference between the two teams was basically the tactics. Uh, back in the 90s, we didn't have a big forward like uh, Abby Wambach to finish on goal. We had more smaller women, a lot more skill, a lot more tactical right. possession, such as Mia Hamm. Yeah. Okay? She was not a Abby Wambach kind of striker. She was more of a forward. She wanted to run at you. She wanted to work giving goes with her midfield yep. to get in scoring opportunities. So by doing that, we actually kept our legs fresh. We played a lot of long ball. With this uh, 2000 team, and what happened is over the course of three or four games, when you play that long ball, that midfield has more ground to cover. Okay, and by the last championship game in the finals, our women were their legs just had too many miles on them. We had had to keep more possession and and really keep us engaged in the game because we were you could tell gassed out. And yeah, it was it was so obvious by the second half that the, the midfield just literally vanished. I mean, there was no possession really happening through the midfield. The balls were constantly moving into attack, back and forth, defense, attack, defense, attack. And it's an exhausting uh, style of play, to yeah, say the least. It is, it is. And the problem with that is, like I said, when a defense plays the ball to the forwards through the air, it stretches up the defense to the forwards. They send that ball over. The forwards are now chasing that ball. The defenders are kind of slowly jogging up. But it forces that midfield to really cover a lot of area, okay? Playing the long ball is not a bad idea, okay? But it shouldn't be used time and time again. You use it when you need it or if there's a tactical advantage to where there's an open hole that you can send that ball through. If we'd involved the fullback more in possession, those center mids would have been fresh and would have had a lot more possession and actually a lot more opportunity to score in front of the goal, not from crosses. Yeah. I mean, it just, it's heartbreaking when you know, and if you've watched the game, that, you know, in the first 15, 20 minutes of the game, we had so many opportunities in the box to finish. So uh, what Coach Gabe is absolutely saying is, is, is relevant. What do they need to do? I mean, here we are, the Olympics coming up, 2012. Um, same team is going to be going to that event. Sure. And, you know, what could they really need to be, what do they really truly need to be working on between now and then? I, I think the biggest thing that they need to work on is not necessarily the long ball. Okay, or a lot of crosses. We're very proficient in that. What we need to really do is take our defense and those outside fullbacks and the center mids and really work a lot of give and goes, a lot of overlapping runs, build that attack. Okay, a lot of our opportunities came off of the crosses, or when we did shoot, we were shooting at an angle. We never really got any clear shots on top of the box. We need to find some way of penetrating the top of the 18, so we're shooting at the top of the 18, not having our chances from a decreased angle. Or from across. Nothing wrong with that tactic, but we've got to be a little more multi-dimensional, not one-dimensional. The J Japanese team could see us coming three days before the World Cup happened. The Japanese played that defensive style against Germany, and they won. They played it against Sweden, and they won. And they did the same thing. They parked the bus in front of the goal in the U.S. We missed a lot of opportunities, but that tactic worked for, Jap for Japan, and they came out with a victory. Yeah, and we're... Uh, pleased that, uh, that the, again, the, the camaraderie that the girls showed after the game and the humbleness. Wonderful. Uh, it's just absolutely great sportsmanship. For those of you that know 
how important that we believe in the roots of soccer. And if you don't know what the roots of soccer is, go click in the link above underneath the coach's corner and you can hear about roots of soccer that we really pride what our academy is about. Now, we'd love to have your interaction and your feedback on how you felt about the U.S. national team in the World Cup final game as well. So you can comment below on this video. If you're watching this on Facebook, you can also comment below the video. We'd like to hear your feedback. We really would. We want to interact with you and get to know what is it your feelings are about where we are as far as U.S. soccer, because I think it's on the grow. Just this morning, some news broadcasters, they'll remain nameless at the moment, uh, were talking about soccer on the radio. They never talk about soccer on the radio in Corpus Christi. So that's a positive sign that those girls did a fantastic job of creating awareness for soccer in this city. So comment below, and we look forward to connecting with each and every one of you. Well, one last thing. I want to point out, there, there's nothing to fix about U.S. soccer in, uh, here, or well, I'm sorry, women's U.S. soccer here in America. There's nothing to fix. We have developed a product, and we've built and added to that product. So going into the Olympics next year, there's nothing we need to fix. We just need to basically tweak or build onto our, you know, toolbox. Got a lot of great tools. We just need to add more tools to the box. We don't need to fix anything. We just need to improve our arsenal. Great. So we look forward to hearing what you have to say below. Take care. Thanks for listening.